Thank you very much, Board of Directors, MD Maristrom, Mr. Yeka Adebola. I'll make my comments later. <laughs> and by the way, I was the first again here today. Nobody was here. So. Good afternoon, uh, everyone here. On behalf of Maristrom, it is my honor and privilege to unveil the Maristrom Diaspora Trust. Okay, Maristrom Diaspora Trust, building our dreams from anywhere in the world. As we assess stimulus management investments, most importantly, trust. Hopefully, a company, Nigeria's abroad, can trust. Congratulations, and welcome. Quickly, I'm going to call on um, Prince Dapo Ati Lekon, um, Chairman of Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce, to please give us remarks because I, I don't think it's not going to be. Thank you. Round of applause as a company. Thank you very much. Um, the Group Managing Director, Mary Strum, uh, Directors of the company, Mr. Debola, the MD of Western Security, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Nigerian Business Chamber of Commerce to witness the launch of this very important and strategic product, and I'd like to congratulate you on this initiative. Um, as a chamber, we um, represent the bulk of businesses between Nigeria and the United Kingdom, and our function primarily is to encourage trade relations between two countries. But the significance is the number of Nigerians in the UK. Uh, we have probably the largest concentration of Nigerians outside of the Nigerian United Kingdom. And lately, the interest of that population uh, has been important to our chamber. Uh, and we are encouraging you know, a lot of our people back home to begin to look at Nigeria as an investment destination. So when this came up, uh, the chamber mandated me to be here and to ensure that we provide you all the support that you require to ensure that our brothers and sisters in the UK take advantage of the opportunity of this program. Um, my comment basically is one that the pedigree of mercy uh, speaks for itself. So the issue of trust, which is the gap you are trying to fill, um, is very genuine. And I think you're capable and you have the uh, pedigree to do that. So it will not be a problem getting this sold to our brothers. Uh, ideally, I would have thought that this event should happen in London. Uh, and my expectation is that in the next couple of weeks, you will engage on a road show that will take this from the UK to the United States of America, some parts of Europe, and we will be ready to assist you uh, in ensuring that this is also done. Um, secondly, is the fact that um, I think it's important that the American itself almost begin to look at becoming a brand in these areas. Uh, you must establish it in the UK and the US uh, because our brothers have become very British and very American. Uh, and that itself has no challenges. And, you know, they, they, they take everything in Nigeria with a pinch of salt. And no matter what you say, they are convinced that uh, there's, there's going to be a problem. So if you become, if you have a subsidiary in the UK, um, then it means that they are engaging with an institution in an environment where the laws of that environment will maintain some relationship. That is better trust than the Nigerian company. Uh, I can assure you that considering the amount of money that Nigerians will meet to this country every year, there's a huge amount of opportunity uh, within the Nigerian diaspora, and they're very conservative. Uh, so, I would advise that Maristrom begins to see establishing a Maristrom UK and Maristrom US so that it is those institutions that govern by the laws of the society that will be offering this product on behalf of Maristrom. Uh, that way, you can ensure that the, the, the Nigerian diaspora uh, will be comfortable to engage because they know that if there's disputes, it is the UK law or the US law that will mediate that relationship. Uh, that's number one. The other side of it is also the fact that even though these products for Nigerians in the diaspora, there's also a need in the future to produce to get a product for Nigerians that are looking outside. Um, yeah, on December, on um, December 4, um, uh, there was a general presidential dinner of our chamber, and I did say that 
like Tata of India, the trade is like the Nigerians must begin to invest abroad. See, until we begin to invest abroad, and there's a deluge of money, Nigerians are the highest, top largest spenders in the, in the high streets in the UK. Um, we look at property business, uh, Nigerians are buying more than probably next to the Arabs and to the Chinese in the United Kingdom. So it means that there's a lot of money here that's also looking as investment there. So in a couple of months, I think should be looking at also a product for Nigerians who are looking at doing business and investing in opportunities uh, internationally. Uh, those will be my comments for now, um, and I can uh, attest to the fact that the NBCC uh, will be willing to assist you uh, in getting the aspiration of the community. Thank you. Quickly, I will uh, call on Honorable uh, BK Dabiri Erewa to also um, give uh, just some remarks from her mm -hmm. and what to think about this product. A round of applause for her. She works uh, Group Managing Director, members of the board, MD, Mr. Adebola, I commend you for your dynamism. I can see you're um, a young, budding Nigerian entrepreneur, and I think this is a very good product. And as uh, my brother has said, first, this is coming at a very good time. Many years ago, before I got into Parliament, I was building my property here in Lekki. And I went there to inspect my own property, and apparently there was a man and a woman that came in. And they, they, I was looking at them, I didn't know what was going on. They took the man around, I was showing him, okay, they took the woman, oh, this is this, just like you said about the guy in your video. This happened to me in my own property. Oh, um, oh, beautiful. Oh, I think she was like, oh, fantastic. This is lovely. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's like, I didn't know what was going on. So they left, and I asked the engineer, and he was telling me that the man brought the woman to show her her property. She was selling money home, and I said, but you should have told me. That was funny. That woman was left with the mind that she sent money home, and she had built a house. And it, it was my house. <laughs> so she must have got back, she must have been defrauded. This was like 15 years ago. But 2015, the problem is still there. So that's why I'm saying this is coming at the right time. And as former chairman of the Committee of Diaspora, this was some of the issues we were confronted with by Nigerians in Diaspora. You tell us to come home. Um, how can we trust anybody? We send this home, this is what happened. We did that home, this is what happened. You want to do a business, you want to invest genuinely, you're frustrated, you're defrauded. So, um, we can only save ourselves and uh, build our own image and all that. I believe what you're doing will address a major gap between Nigeria's in diaspora and Nigeria. And the major word here, as Mr. Adeneko said, is trust. And I believe that if you can be trusted, um, a lot of this product will sell. We're looking at 15 million, about 15 million Nigerians in the diaspora. And there is a rough estimate. There's no accurate database. Mr. Adelica said UK, we have the largest, but I think the largest actually will be in the United States of America. Because we're looking at about 4 million Nigerians in the US alone. And uh, we're dealing with Nigerians who are very, very successful. There's no way you go to the Nigerians are not excelling. And they want to bring these things back home, but they don't know how. They don't even know who to trust. And beyond that, even friends of Nigeria want to do this thing, they don't know who to trust. So when they come to me, it's like, well, it's not my job. So now I can say go to Mary Strip. <laughs> and we just came back from an event in the UK, and this also came up as a topic. But I didn't know about, I knew we were invited, and I didn't know I was able to make it. But we give God the glory. So uh, we thank you for doing this here and all that. Now, in terms of Nigerians and diaspora, you're looking at London and America. No. In Sudan alone, 50% of the population are made up of Nigerians. There are countries, what oh, was it, Cameroon. Uh, there are so many countries. Which country now? 50, about 70% um, are virtually Nigerians. So you also need to look beyond US and UK and look in Africa. You know, and I, I was just working on the statistics, I didn't finish before I came, but there are many, many countries where Nigerians are. In Vietnam, you'd be surprised Nigerians are looking for menstrual. You know, countries that you don't even think about, Nigerians are there, there's no connection. What do they, that's why we said on the government level, there should be a diaspora commission. 
They won't stop ages to deal with diaspora matters. On this level, thank you for bringing Mary Stream. But I just want to appeal to you that it is trust that matters. We are ready to work with you. I've been chairman of this committee for about six years and we gave diaspora a face and a name. So we're ready to work with you, but you must have women on your board. <laughs> and then we'll support you in reaching out to Nigeria in the diaspora because they actually need you and you're coming at a time that your services will be needed, will be valuable, not only to Nigeria, but also those countries where... Um, and then I support the Sardinian on that. You should also think of um, those who want to invest in our So, um, I congratulate you. And I wish you all the very best. And you can count on whatever support or whatever you think I can be of value to you. Thank you very much. I hope.